I bought this e-bike second hand on eBay for £350. The seller didn't tell me at the time that he'd repaired the bike following vandal damage with hot glue and black tape. Disastrous. He bought this replacement battery at a car boot sale, no BMS fitted. Over the months of commuting I'd noticed the battery getting tired and I was focusing my energies on building its replacement from laptop batteries. I still planned to do that but then the thought occurred to me what can I do to the battery now to stop or even reverse its degradation. That means taking the battery apart to see what's inside and so while there I thought I'd take the opportunity to fix a couple more things. So the first task is to check the cells and see uh, what the damage has been in consequence of seven months of usage with no balance charging or battery management system. The second task was to install some belt and braces fusing to make things safer. And the third task was in to install some balance charging leads so that until I commission my battery management system, which I'm not yet ready to trust, I can manually balance the battery um, using an external balance charger. And finally, before I snipped this battery out, it was soldered in and couldn't be removed and replaced easily. I want to fix that and make it a removable battery. Well, this is the offending beast. This is my e-bike's battery and as you can see it's a lash up. It is a bit trepidatious because this bike is my primary means of transport. I visit my customers with it. Um, so the minute I snipped these wires, um, I was without transport. Anyway, and of course these are dangerous as you may have seen in earlier videos. So um, I have to proceed with caution. Get rid of this. Well underneath the black battery is a yellow battery and that yellow battery does have a balanced charge lead connector which you can see just there. I remember Andy the guy that sold me the bike telling me that he spent one evening taping it up with black tape just for the hell of it. That's complete tosh of course. What he was doing is hiding that balanced charging lead because he thought an unconnected wire might raise questions he didn't want to answer and specifically make it clear that um, the battery uh, didn't have a battery management system in it. Unfortunately my balance charger can only do six cells and this is seven so I still have to fit some new connectors. But I can use this connector to measure the voltages of each of the internal banks of cells. In other words to measure how well the battery is currently balanced. So this is the money shot seven months of commuting every weekday um, somewhere between three and fifteen miles and recharging with just a simple um, power brick battery charger no balance charger no BMS yields a low of 3.9 and a high of 4.1 so a variance of 0.2 volts between the cell banks so let's think about what that means um, all of these cell banks are connected in series and the voltages add together. If all of the cells were perfectly balanced and they were all at 4.1 volts, um, then relative to that perfect pack, this pack is half a volt down. And that means the charger will continue to charge until it reaches the target voltage, 28.8 I think. And that means that the cells that are already at their maximum will be pushed way past it. And that's the source of the damage that you do to packs when you don't balance them. They get overcharged and that damages their lifespan. Another thing to look at when assessing um, battery condition is the internal resistance. And in this pack the lowest internal resistance of a cell bank is 16 milliohms, and the highest internal resistance is 30 milliohms. I'm not sure how significant that is. Perhaps someone can let me know. So the first objective of the operation has been completed. I now know how unbalanced the cells are and in future I'll balance them um, and at least stop the damage if not reverse um, some of the lowered capacity. What remains is to do the other three things, the balance lead, the fuses and making the battery removable. 
Adding the balance charge leads is very straightforward. Just be careful not to touch anything in the battery which is going to cause a short and make sure the leads are connected in the right order. But I'll verify that before I close up anyway. Right, all the connections are done. Well, let's take a moment to look at a diagram of what I'm up to here. The battery pack is in reality a collection of individual cells. These cells are organised into rows of cell banks and each cell bank is connected to its neighbour in series. This battery has seven cell banks. I'm adding a centre tap so I can consider the battery to be two smaller batteries, a set of three cell banks and a set of four. I'm then adding connections to the bottom of the bottom bank, the top of the top bank and the centre tap in the middle. I'm using a UK kettle lead connector for the battery. It's um, difficult to stick things in the end of it so it's safe from that perspective. It's also relatively weatherproof and it's um, high current. This implements the removability requirement I have. I just plug it into the bike when I'm ready to go and unplug it if I want to do any maintenance on it. And then for charging or maintenance I have another cable made up um, with two outputs. The centre tap and the bottom lead implement four cell charging and the centre tap and the top lead implement three cell charging and of course the balance leads themselves are present but not shown. Well my last objective was some safe fusing. I added a fuse in the battery's bottom negative lead to provide complete security when the battery's on the bike or on the charger. Then I added a fuse into the centre tap, much lower rating, 5 amp, to make sure that the top three cell banks when they're being charged are protected by a fuse. The positive of the battery is not protected by a fuse but there is one on the bike which links into the positive feed. This is the physical realisation of the system. The battery has been rewrapped. Um, this um, cable tie is telling me that this is the centre tap fuse and it's a 5 amp. This is the negative terminal fuse and it's um, 20 amp. This is the 3 cable, 3 cell balance charger and the 4 cell balance charger. This is the kettle lead and this side is on here because you can't easily poke anything down there. Um, when you plug it into the bike you just plug this into the female version of this. Or is it the male? I guess it's the male version of that. To plug it into the charging system you use this little adapter here. This is not entirely safe because if you take these out and touch them together you'll blow the fuse. But you have to be careful. So with um, the three cell adapter connected you can plug in the three cell balance charger and you can ask about the voltages in the battery and these are the top three cells and do something similar with the the four cells so again being careful balance charger out first um, and then either disconnect that or disconnect this just one other little thing the seven cell balance charging lead which you saw in the video earlier it's still there but I can't use it with this B6 Mini so I've made a little pouch to tuck it in there. So that's the physical realisation of the project. So we snipped out the battery from the bike, we unwrapped it, found a charging port, found some hideous soldering, um, fitted a centre tap to enable us to charge it um, in two halves, fitted some fuses and fitted a socket which enables us to remove the battery from the bike and now we can balance charge it and I've been doing that for about a week and the bike I believe is is more uh, is it, the battery is now better the it seems to last longer and provides more power when it's running and it's certainly a lot safer and so um, job done anyway thanks for watching I hope you liked it and for more like this please subscribe